A welcome to Back to Basics Bootcamp Tumblr Edition, where myself and two other amazing artists will be sharing weekly videos with all the best tips, tricks, and Tumblr making secrets. Let's get to it. Welcome to week eight. Our theme this week are beginner-friendly teacher tumblers. Now, pencil tumblers have been around for years. I am not claiming to have invented this style. However, the wine pencil tumblers are a bestseller in my group. I've had some people ask for a tutorial, so I figured I would show you guys because they are absolutely precious. The first thing you're going to want to do is grab a template. If you don't have one, I will link the one I bought on Etsy years ago down below. It is perfect because it's already curved, so it wraps around this wine glass really easily. I just sized a little zigzag. I did it, I think, 11 inches by 3 quarters, and then I also made just um, like a long rectangle, and I did that 0.4 by 11, and we'll use that for the top. So the first thing we want to do is make a straight line around the top of our tumbler. So you can use whatever you want to make your straight line. I liked the lid of my mica powder. I just grabbed my pencil, put it on top, and twist my tumbler around as my pencil draws a nice straight line. Now we're going to take our zigzag template and we're going to line it up right along that straight line. So the flat side of this template is going to be going along our line. And I just pull it right off the backing. I hold it in my hand. I kind of stick the end onto my arm and then just wrap it around. Um, you can kind of stretch and manipulate your vinyl a little bit too, and don't worry if this gets wrinkles in it or bubbles or anything like that because it's just a stencil, it is going to come off. To cut my stencils, I use whatever scrap vinyl I have. I buy the multiple color pack from TechWrap and there are colors in there that I rarely ever use, like this gray, so I just grab that and that's what I'm cutting my stencils out of. I just use 651, you can use 631, you can use whatever you want, your craft room, your rules. I did have some issues with my spray paint. I don't know why it was like chunky on my cup, so you will see my paint job looks a little bit rough and I did have to sand it so my vinyl would even stick to this tumbler, but it's fine, it all worked out in the end. So now I'm going to go in with my exacto knife and I'm just going to trim the little edges off so I can have a nice clean little V here in this spot. It will be a little bit smaller than the other ones but once it's all glittered you're not going to notice. Nobody else is going to notice so don't worry about that. Now we're just going to push this down really nicely and we will flip our cup over and we'll start working on the other side. Now we're going to do similar to what we did to mark out our stencil on the top. We're just going to flip our cup over and now we're working on making straight lines for the eraser and the little silver metal part around the pencil. And again, you can use whatever you have at home. You don't need to use the same things I do, whatever you want for spacing. So for the eraser, I just use the lid of one of my glitter shakers. And you will see here, I try to take that little rectangle and wrap it around my tumbler. And it's been a while since I've made one of these and I forgot that this curve is a pain. So I am going to ditch this rectangle. So don't bother cutting one when you cut your stencil, just do your zigzag. And I'm gonna grab my electrical tape instead. Now that I'm reminded my vinyl will not work, I need to make a third line so that I can line up my electrical tape on each side of that line. You'll see what I mean in a second. So again, use what you have at home. I use the lid of my glitter shaker and the lid of my mica powder to make a third line. And so the top's going to be the eraser, the in between my two lines is gonna be the silver on the pencil and then of course the yellow on the body. Now we're gonna take electrical tape and we're just going to wrap that around both of those lines that we did. So we'll leave the middle part for the silver exposed. Um, like I said, electrical tape works so well for taping around a curved surface because it stretches really well and you can really manipulate it. So go ahead and wrap both of these lines. Now that our cup is taped off, we're moving on to the fun part, which is the sparkle. So all of my colors are from the glitter guy. I will have a discount code in the description box. I'm going to be using Soulless, Sands of Time, Shortcake, Ice, Magic Yellow, Mica Powder, and then I forgot to show you guys the bottle of champagne, but that's going to be our silver. We're going to be making our own yellow glitter because I have a specific shade in mind and I didn't have a bottle of glitter, so we're going to make our own. So I'm putting in about two teaspoons of this ice glitter into my cup and then I'm going to start putting in little like bloops of that magic yellow mica powder until I get a yellow that I like. I wanted my yellow to be a little bit bright so I ended up doing three little bloops of mica powder. You can do whatever you want or you can use um, a yellow glitter that you already have. This is your tumbler so 
you make your choices. Now you're going to want to grab some Mod Podge. I happen to have this industrial size that I've had for years and you're going to want to grab a paintbrush. Basically anything will work. You want it to be just a little bit bigger than the space you are painting your Mod Podge into. I'm going to throw my tumbler grip into my tumbler to hold it so it's easier to spin while I glitter and we're going to start with Soulless for the black which will be the lead and I'm just going to start painting on my Mod Podge. Now when I do this I tend to go a little bit thick with my Mod Podge because it dries quickly but I'm trying to make sure that I don't have a bunch of streaks in it. And now we're going to move to the bottom of our tumbler which will be the top of our pencil and paint in between our two tape lines using champagne for our silver. I did off camera go ahead in and put another coat over my soulless after my first one had dried I let it sit for about 20 minutes. The champagne didn't need a second coat um, so we're just letting that one roll. Now I'm going to go in and remove just those top two pieces of tape. You want to leave the zigzag stencil on for now. Now for the eraser, we're going to be using shortcake and I like to use a larger brush for this part because it's a larger space to paint. So I like to put a good like glob of Mod Podge on the very top of my tumbler and then kind of grab from that as I'm carefully spreading it around. Now I don't have any secrets for how to apply your Mod Podge along a straight line. Just take your time. Um, I just kind of let my brush guide its way along my straight line, I guess is the easiest way to describe it, but just don't overthink it. You can do it, I promise. You can see a little bit better here as I'm painting on the Mod Podge for the yellow, how I go along a straight line. I just kind of gently push my brush down on my tumbler and carefully just twist my tumbler around. I don't really move my paintbrush or my tumbler. I'm just kind of keeping a steady hand as I'm going. And now we're going to do this entire center part. Now I do end up going back in and doing a second coat over this yellow. So again, I let it sit about 20 minutes. I'm going to brush it off and then go in with a second coat. And then I'm going to let that fully dry, let that sit for a about 30 minutes. I'm going to give it a coat of my Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss and then we're going to go ahead and remove our stencil. Now this part is very important. You can remove your stencil whenever you want but you have to let your sealer dry before you move on to your brown glitter. That is like the most important thing in this entire tutorial because if your sealer is not dry your brown glitter is going to stick to it instead of being able to be brushed off once a Mod Podge under the brown is clear. So just make sure you give it plenty of time. I let mine sit for a good half an hour before moving on to this step. Now this is the home stretch. This is the final little part that we need to paint our Mod Podge on. I'm just going through, I like to do the zigzag first and then do the straight line after. Um, the zigzag takes a little bit longer so I find doing it first and making sure I get a good thick coating on there and then doing the straight line, make sure my Mod Podge is not dry. Um, before I apply my glitter. So I will go ahead and dump on my Sands of Time and then I will let this dry. I will give it another good coat of my clear sealer so that hopefully none of this glitter shifts and then I will go ahead and put on a coat of epoxy once my sealer is dry and I will see you on the other side for decals. There goes an orange, <laughs> courtesy of my toddler. Uh, so for the decal on this tumbler, I'm just gonna keep it simple. So this is a pretty small space to put a decal. Now, preferably I would do this with a water slide, um, but I'm out of water slide paper and I didn't realize it. So I had to use vinyl, which was a bummer because this decal was a little bit too fragile to be this small out of vinyl. But I'm just going to grab it with my transfer tape and I'm going to put it on, push it down in the center, squish out the sides. Um, this decal is available as a free download. I will list it in the description box below. I created it in Procreate and I do think it is super cute. I just wish that I had water slide paper, but it's fine. There are supposed to be little lines around the word teach and then a couple more hearts around love. Um, but I end up having to go in and hand place them because like I said, the vinyl, not ideal. There goes the orange again. <laughs> Once this decal is on, you can decide if your tumbler is finished or if you want to leave it for personalization. If it is finished, go ahead and give it two coats of epoxy. Good to go. Mine, I'm going to leave as is. I'm not going to do my two finishing coats until it is sold and um, my customer lets me know if they'd like the teacher's name on there or not. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this episode of Boot Camp helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to keep up on all the Boot Camp videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out Pale Bird Designs channel on Friday for another beginner-friendly teacher tumbler tutorial. Until next time, happy crafting!